Alright, come down, Bob. Alright, come on. Okay. We're gonna go down on the couch now. relationship there seems to be this ongoing power struggle who's the boss who tells who what to do and who gets what and at certain times we'd like to get certain things from our cats and at certain times they'd like to get certain things from us and John in the upcoming segment will explain to us how to make that relationship work better What do you think a cat like Bobby's perspective is on their cohabitants, humans, and sees their role in their life? Okay, uh, servants. <laughs> that, the, the, the cliche <laughs> is very true. And the degree of that will often, um, you know, depends on the interaction and how you interact with Bobby and Bobby's personality. So the more gregarious they are, the, it seems that, that they're more likely to consider you as servants more than say a cat that's very shy but either way you're there to take care of their needs and that doesn't mean to say that they're selfish or that they don't love you it, it just means that's how they view the relationship and then they work with it in accordingly a lot of it's about getting what they want it is that's, that's, that's humans do the same thing right. i mean we're, we're, there are the, the, cats are very different from humans but in many ways you know they, they are the, they are the, very similar you know, I thought we don't work free. They don't work free either. Mm -hmm. um, they need to get something out of the relationship, and if, and if that happens, they're willing to put something into the relationship. You know, it's, that shows up when you play with them and treat them, or, or you, you know, train them to sit to, or to to jump off the counter and stay off the counter. Um, you know, that that's very reflective of that. When they get, you know, they'll get paid. They're more likely to do that. But. Um, you know, there's a very strong bond. So, um, many cats prefer to be around humans more than uh, they do other cats because the territory issue is, is not really as much. I mean, uh, if a cat's in there, their territory is under direct threat all the time, whereas humans, there's, there's some threat there, but not very much. When I'm working and he's crying at me for one reason or another. Are you going to get off my desk, Bob? Like, what's the best way for me to deal with that? Okay, time to leave me alone to work, okay? Because he can be pretty assertive sometimes. Go on, go on. Leave me alone to work now. Go in your chair. Okay, so it's good to, if you want to set boundaries that you're doing it at consistent times during the day. So if you have a work time, let's just say from uh, 10 to noon. That's it. Just sit down, have a nice little nap. Uh, you play with him beforehand and then, you know, get some of that energy out. And, um, and then you play with them afterwards, or, or at least show them some sort of attention. I'd suggest play in the beginning to, get, to release up some of the pent-up energy, and then give them a bit of food. Uh, or you could give them like, another part of a meal there. Be careful you don't overfeed those, so always give the same amount of food in a 24-hour period. And then when, when you're working, you have to ignore him completely. Because if you ignore him completely, he's, he's less likely to go ahead and keep bothering you. See, a cat wants to, the payoff for a cat bothering you is getting attention if, uh, of any kind. You, even if you say, go away, leave me alone, that's still attention, and that counts. And any time you do that, you reinforce the behavior of them bothering you when you don't want to be. So you have to completely ignore them, pretend they're not there, no matter what they do, and you can't break that. If you go, like, say, five days, and you've been great, you've ignored them, and then you 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 know you forget and then you say no go away you have to start again and then you have to get that so eventually what happens they, they reach a threshold where they realize this isn't working so they stop doing it but if, it, if they reach that threshold it's not working and all of a sudden you give in that what they're thinking is well this doesn't work most of the time but it works some of the time so if i do this a hundred times i'm going to get rewarded it so the, the more you break that and, and give in to them, the more difficult it becomes to do that. So consistency, ignoring them from the beginning, is the best way to do it. It's the only way to do it. You, you deal with it when you're, if a cat's waking you up in the middle of the night, too. You just roll over and pretend they're not there. You don't get up and feed them. You don't say shoo. You just roll over and pretend you can't hear them.
In next week's segment, we'll talk about the types of toys your cat likes and how to deal with the problem of them getting bored. Like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell. Don't miss an episode of Bobcat's Playground. Help us change the world one cat at a time. In the upcoming segment, John will tell us how to manipulate your cat with treats. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, what's the temperature in here? Bobcat's Playground is produced by Edit Extreme. The opinions expressed are those of the participants and are not intended to replace professional advice. Find out more at editextreme.com.